Hi everyone and thanks for joining me for another Cricut tutorial. Today we're going to make this wine gift bag. I think this is a really fun idea and it's a neat way to step it up a notch when you want to give the gift of a bottle of wine. Just makes it a little more personal, a little more special of a presentation. You can personalize this. I use the Cricut Easy Press and put the word cheers on mine but you could easily put the recipient's name on it. If you're giving this to a bridal couple, maybe at a shower, you could put their last name on it, their wedding date. Add a couple of wine glasses and you've got a really nice little gift set to give to a coworker or a boss. So I think this is going to be a really versatile gift and just by changing the fabrics you can change the season, change the occasion, and just a lot, a lot of fun. So let's jump over to Design Space and I'll show you what you need to do. I've got a free pattern for you so that part's done for you. Also I want to add if you're a Cricut Explore user just cut this out in paper and use the paper as your pattern pieces and then cut it out by hand. So super easy, really simple to cut and totally doable. So here we are in Cricut Design Space. This is the pattern I have provided this for you. You can find it in the link below this video in the video description. But this file represents everything you need fabric wise for the wine bag that we're going to make. You can see by the photo here, the red pieces represent the red flannel pieces that I used and the blue pieces represent the denim that I used. So today we're going to be using some other color fabrics, but just keep in mind, the blue pieces are the main fabric for the outside and the red pieces are the lining that's going to show on the top and the bottom of the outside of the bag. So once you open this up, you're going to click make it. You don't need to resize it. You don't need to do anything. Just click make it. It's going to tell you that you need a large 24 inch mat. We're just going to click OK. And you're going to cut your fabric and line it up on your mats accordingly. So again, this is the red fabric. If you look at my picture over here, this is representing this piece and uh, this piece and here are my blue fabrics. Now you can get the blue fabrics on a 12 by 12 mat if you wish. I just put everything on the same mat. So that's everything you need to know in Design Space. You can click connect, choose your machine. If you're using the same fabrics I did, I chose denim when I cut the denim and I chose flannel when I cut flannel. In today's project I'm going to use both pieces of flannel so I just use flannel and I use the default settings. So that's everything we need to do in Design Space. Let's get our fabric prepared and cut this out. Okay to prepare our fabric we're going to need the acrylic ruler, a fabric mat, we're going to use the brayer, the rotary cutter, and two pieces of coordinating fabric. Depending on the width of your fabric you should be okay with a half of yard of each fabric but you are going to have leftover. So to start out, I just took my fabric and I folded it in half and I cut it approximately seven and a half inches wide. The pattern calls for six and a half inches wide. So I'm just giving myself a little bit of wiggle room and just in case I don't have it lined up exactly. So cut two strips of fabric, seven and a half inches wide. Now I just leave the extra length hanging off the edge of the mat. I find that works easiest for me. And then after I cut this first piece, I'm just going to flip it around and cut on the opposite edge. You're going to line it up on the mat, just like it shows on the screen. And this is where I like to use the brayer and just make sure that those fabric pieces are stuck down really, really well. You're going to go ahead and send that over to the Cricut. And again, there is a flannel setting. If you browse materials, choose flannel if you're using flannel or cotton, whatever you're using. But I'm using flannel. And like I've shown you before, I like to just rip it off the mat really quickly. Once you cut out all of your pieces, you should have two small pieces, two medium and two long pieces. The first thing we're going to do is put our small and medium pieces, pretty sides together, lining them up on the short side on one end of the medium fabric, just like this. And you're going to sew from left to right across the top one quarter inch on both pieces, quarter inch seam allowance. Sew those pieces together. Once you've sewn those together, you're going to use your iron and I'm using the easy press mat and you're going to press those seams nice and flat. I'm pressing mine towards the dark side just so they don't show, but whichever way works for you, that's fine. 
Now you're going to put these two pieces, pretty sides together, just like this. And you want to clip those seams on the side so that they're matched perfectly. That's just going to make it line up when this bag's all finished. It'll look like one continuous seam. So match those seams front and back up. And I like to push one to the front or one towards the bottom and one towards the top just to keep the bulk out, but you can do whatever works for you. Make sure everything is lined up nicely. And now you're going to measure from the top down one inch. And I'm using the self-healing mat, the grid on the self-healing mat to find that one inch mark. And then I'm using a Cricut acrylic ruler. And I do have all the products linked below the video in the description. I'm using a chalk marker. You can use a fabric marker. It's just this dark fabric. It's hard to see a ink pen. So I'm using the clover chalk marker. Once you have those one inch marks indicated, you're going to move down another inch and make a mark at the two inch from the top. Now we're going to take this over to our sewing machine and you're going to sew from top to your first mark. Don't sew between those two marks and then sew all the way down to the end. Same thing on the other side. Don't sew between the two marks. Sew all the way to the end and then sew across the bottom. Do not sew in the cutout areas. So you're going to sew down. Don't sew between the marks. Go all the way down across the bottom and same thing on the opposite side. Don't sew between the two marks. We'll go ahead and prepare our other one. We're going to put these two pieces pretty sides together. And this time we're going to mark a spot and I like to use straight pins that remind me not to sew between them. But we're going to mark a, so a spot on the side. You can do this wherever you want, but I like to do it on the side. I just think it's the least noticeable and it's much easier to work with when you need to box those corners. So I'm just going to mark a spot and you need to leave two to three inches in between your two pins or your, if you want to mark it with a pin, you can. You're going to sew down to the pins. Don't sew between them and sew off the end. Sew across the bottom and all the way up the other side. So go ahead and take those to your sewing machine and sew accordingly. All right, I've got my two pieces sewn. You can see I've sewn this one everywhere except for between those two marks. I've got a thread here. Let me snip that off. But you can see it is sewn all the way around with the exception of between those two marks and my cutouts. And you want to use a coordinating thread. I'm just using a light gray. It's easier for you guys to see where the stitching actually is on camera, but you, it is better to use a coordinating thread. And this one is sewn all the way around except for between the two pens. And again, the notches are still, there are no sewing in the notches. Now you're going to turn this one right side out. And if you want, you can go ahead and box your corners now. I'm going to do it in a minute, but if you wanted to box them before you turn this right side out, you can definitely do that. But we're going to turn this one right side out and we're going to tuck it right inside this one that is wrong side out. So the pretty sides are touching of the two different bags that we've made. Once we have that tucked inside, we're going to reach inside and we're going to line up those side seams. And again, I like to push one forward, one back and give it a clip. But you can do it however it works for you. If you want to push them both the same way, whatever works for you. And once you have both of the side seams lined up, go ahead and throw a couple more clips or pins in there just to keep everything lined up for you. And then we're going to take it over to the sewing machine and we're going to sew one quarter inch around the top one quarter inch all the way around. You can use your free arm for this if you want, or I like to just open it up and put the presser foot on the inside and sew it. Now you can see I've sewn all the way around. You're going to reach inside and pull it out. And then we're going to box all four corners. You guys are familiar with how to do this. 
But if you're not, I will show you. We're just going to open up that corner, line up those two seams. And again, one to the front, one to the back is how I like to do it. Clip it. And then you're going to sew one quarter inch across that seam. One quarter inch across that seam. Repeat it for the other side. Line up the two seams, one to the front, one to the back. Clip it. And then you're going to sew one quarter inch. Repeat it for the opposite end. So I've got all four corners pinned. I'm going to take it over to the sewing machine and sew all four corners. Now it should look something like this. You're going to reach inside that opening in the side of the lining that we left and turn everything right side out. And it takes a little bit of maneuvering, but totally doable. Make sure you reach inside that hole and push out the box corners. And then you're going to line that opening up. It should kind of naturally tuck in on itself. I gave mine a little bit of press and make sure you don't have any threads hanging out. And then go ahead and take that over to the sewing machine and stitch that closed. And again, I don't mind that stitch. If you want to use hem tape, you could do that or you could hand sew it but nobody's gonna see it. It's going to be on the inside lining on the side towards the bottom. Now we're tucking that lining on the inside. And when you do this, you're going to find that you have more lining than you have outer fabric. That's the way it's supposed to be. That's how we're gonna get that plaid fabric sticking out of the top. So make sure you get the bottom two fabrics together and then work it around so that you pull that lining out and it should stick out about a half an inch. So I'm just making sure that it is pushed out all the way around nice and even and again we're going to iron it a little bit just to make that lay nice and flat. All right now that we have that ironed you're going to take it over to your sewing machine and you're going to sew right along that top edge all the way around and that's just a top stitch to keep everything in place. All right, now that we have the top stitched, we are going to turn this wrong side out. There's a lot of turning this wrong side and right side out in this project, but it's necessary and it makes it the easiest way I figured to do it anyway. There's probably an easier way but again, I do what works for me. So once we get that turned wrong side out, and I'm gonna press it just to make sure everything's laying nice and flat. I'm going to line this up on my self-healing mat. And each square is an inch. So I'm going to go down to the two inch mark and I'm going to use my pilot friction pin and I'm going to draw a line all the way across the fabric. And again, this is the lining fabric that we're looking at. This is wrong side out. And then I'm going to measure down an inch from the top and make another mark. So I have two marks, one inch apart. I'm going to flip it over and do the same thing. Go to the two inch mark, make a line. And go to the one inch mark and make a second line. So it should look something like that. I'm going to be sewing right along those lines. That's gonna provide the channel for my drawstring. So we're gonna turn this out wrong, or right side out <laughs> one more time. It's the last time, I promise. And I'm gonna take it over to the sewing machine and put it under the presser foot just like this and sew along those lines. Now, there is enough room to put this over your free arm Probably, depending on your seam allowances, I could put it over mine, but I find it just easier to do it like this. And I'm trying to do this one-handed while filming. So I just wanted to show you why we were turning it wrong side out and marking on the inside. So now you're just going to thread your ribbon or twine or whatever you wanted to use. You need to cut them about two pieces, about 15 inches. You're going to thread it in one hole, go all the way around past the second hole and back out the same one you came in, just like that. And then I like to tie the ends together 
I cut these a little bit shorter, so I would recommend cutting them about 15 inches long, but this worked. And then you're going to do the exact same thing, only starting your thread on the opposite side. So we're going to thread it in this side, work it all the way around, past the one that we just did, and out the other side. And I think this would be cute with like baker's twine. I think it would be cute with some hemp twine. So you can see this is what our finished bag looks like. I think these are so fun. Now again, I would probably personalize something right along here. You could put an, a monogram. You could put a last name. You could put a date. You can see I put cheers on this one. I use Cricut Glitter Iron-On and the Cricut Easy Press and put cheers on this. So I think this is going to make a really nice gift for the upcoming holidays. I think it would be fun to put a bottle of wine in one of these bags with the word blessed on it and take that to your Thanksgiving get together or like I said, Christmas weddings, showers, you know, Mother's Day, birthdays, whatever. I think it's a lot of fun. So if you guys enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, and share. Don't forget to click that bell icon so that you're notified every time I put out a new video. And until next time, never stop making. See you guys. Bye.